Hi guys. We'll wait a couple of minutes. Hello, Vipin. Hey, hi, Ron. How are you? Okay. So I think we are going to wait, uh, say, one more minute, and I will start sharing the screen. We'll start going through the usual. you know, the meeting minutes and so on. Okay. You can share my screen, I mean, you can see my screen. Yes. Okay. So I will um, add the attendees here. Anyway, before we start, we have to uh, do this. We have to do the antitrust policy and the and the hypologic code of conduct. So antitrust policy, basically we agree not to engage in antitrust activities. And for people who want to read the whole text, it's here. Um, and that is the only requirement for uh, participating in the meeting. The next one is this uh, code of conduct. The code of conduct basically says that all are welcome as long as you're nice to each other. Well, nice is a strange word, but basically that you're not rude, that you do not disrespect people as long as you engage in proper discourse, debate. Disagreeing with somebody is not, uh, not, not, not being nice, right? The game is okay. So now we got to go down the list and talk to people who are um, and ask them to introduce themselves. So I'll start with Gary. Hi. Yeah, so I'm, I'm Gary Miller with Intain. We're a uh, technology company uh, that powers the- What is the name of the company again? Sorry. Intain, I-N-T-A-I-N, Intain. And we have software that manages the life cycle for the issuance of asset-backed securities uh, in the debt capital markets. And uh, we use blockchain and AI in that process. Beautiful. Money? Um, I am uh, Manny Pillai from Stopso. Uh, we are developing um, uh, more of a, a next generation uh, digital ledger uh, as a, of our digital asset uh, lifecycle trading platform. Uh, and it's all built around using this CDM and data standards. 
Ron. Good morning, everyone. Ron Quaranta, chairman of the Wall Street Blockchain Alliance. Uh, the WSPA is a nonprofit trade association headquartered in New York with a global mission to guide and promote comprehensive adoption of both blockchain technology and crypto assets across global markets. Um, some of the folks we are very on this call, we are very privileged to also have as members. Uh, and Vipin, as a matter of fact, I think our last meeting in person was at uh, one of our working group meetings. That's right, at the enterprise uh, working group meeting. Always good to see you, my friend. Um, next is Tom, Tom Lee. Are you there, Tom? Hey, I'm here, sorry, I was on mute. This is yeah, Tom. Okay. I hey, uh, actually, I think we talked while we were in Hong Kong. Anyway, I'm my name is Tong Lee, uh, IBMer. I uh, work on fabric deployment and mainly cello project. So I'm here to support uh, our intern, uh, Manny uh, Pillay. Uh, he will later talk about the work he has done uh, during this entire uh, internship period. So I'm um, happy to be in this meeting. Money is your intern? I didn't know that. I, yeah. I'm not an intern anywhere. Manny Pillai is an intern? What happened to this call? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm mistaken. Okay. Uh, the other guy, the other guy, uh, Manic? Sorry, mistake. Manic, oh. Manic, Manic yes. and money are uh, two different people. Money okay. is a... Uh, CEO of Swabs Hub. <laughs> <laughs> so if he's your intern, I would like to call him as an intern That's great. right next uh, to him. <laughs> that's great. I messed up the names. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. I thought I, uh, he just put his name. In it's short. a good way to start a call, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I apologize. I, no, I, no. I really, don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah, We're really bad good. about those long names. Uh, uh, in DLT world, everyone is named. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I wanted to make a long presentation about the derivative hack and CDN. I uh, had prepared some uh, slides for that, but I haven't covered the whole gamut because it it has to go from a lot of um, you know from. Uh, just cover the ground from what is the purpose of the derivative hack, derivative hack, and what was uh, you know what was done, the use case that was presented, and uh, the Rosetta, the CDM, um, uh, CDM library that helps uh, create CDM objects. Um, and then also the hack fest hack uh, itself, where a lot of uh, different teams showed up in New York and uh, created solutions for this toy use case. But money, who is uh, probably uh, creating a real system on this, which is not a toy use case with uh, lots of truncated. Uh, business processes, but something that is really real. Um, can probably talk a little more about that, but before I go further, I think we have to back up a little bit for people who do not know CDM. Uh, the, the common domain model uh, created by ISDA, International Swaps and Derivatives Association, uh, who had already created something called FPML, uh, which is widely used in the industry. Uh, and this time they're, with CDM, their ambitions are a little, little more uh, uh, broad. They want to create a solution that handles not only swaps and derivatives, which are uh, bilateral products, meaning they are agreements with between two uh, parties, uh, but they want to cover also things like securities, loan products, 
uh, foreign exchange and so on. But currently, uh, there is nothing that is, uh, that is live in production from CDM. CDM is still being born, so there's a lot of um, interest from a lot of different people, uh, mostly the big players. Uh, and their aim seems to be to keep the infrastructure the way it is, because that is what is required by the regulators, especially the uh, having uh, uh, brokers, broker dealers, and so on. Um, so money will probably tell us a little more about it, and I can dive into a little, little more of what I had prepared, but uh, I'll create a more extensive presentation, especially focusing on the CDM, because that is our, uh, that is, should be something that we, uh, that we focus on because it will affect capital markets infrastructure all around. Mani, do you want to say anything about what happened? Uh, what, and you are uh, first in CDM? Yeah, yeah, sure. But, but I did see some, some uh, documentation on, on your, your documented on the site. Uh, why don't you bring that up? So, yeah, I, I, I think that's a good introduction. What, what is that? This one, the CDM model, or yeah, the whatever you had uh, documented under the uh, standards. The overview of the is the CDM. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good start. And then I have I have two slides to share, so I can share share next. So here is the sorry. Um, can you see the slide? Nope. You cannot see this slide. Okay. Let me see. Stop share and share uh, the. Now? Yes. Is this what you want? Yeah, then if you, yeah, if you go further down, you have some diagrams there. Yeah, this is the, this is a, from the Rosetta, uh, uh, I mean, from Rosetta perspective, right? Yeah, um, it, it, and then there's a further down there, you have one more, one more, uh, I guess. I saw something else, maybe I missed. Um, it's okay. Um, I'm on, I can start off with and um, yeah, I think we should sketch out the uh, basics because we, they are people are not experts in uh, either one, either ISDA or CDM or anything like that. Okay, um, do, do, do you do you want me to share my screen and, and oh yeah, of course I can stop sharing and you can you can take over. Voila, it's yours. Uh, hold on one second. Hi guys, uh, this is Kurti here. So apologies, I was uh, late to join the call. Um, I'm here, so that's it. Someone else has joined as well. I, I'm uh, Vipin. Hi, uh, this is Shantanu, and um, uh, I'm being late, sorry for that. Okay, are uh, are you able to see the um, the presentation here? Yes. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, just to give a background, um, uh, as Vivian pointed out, FTML has been there for almost uh, I, I guess 50, 17 years now in, in, in production in various forms within the OTC derivatives group. Um, about four years, four three four years back, is the look at at the existing data standards and felt that. Uh, in order to meet the challenges in the new digital world, they had to come up with a much more better and uh, a more precise data standard. And then they started formulating uh, the, the basis of uh, what's the common domain model. Um, essentially, uh, that took most of the work that's done in FTML, but also started adding uh, security processing as well, covering everything from uh, all sorts of asset classes. To, in the capital markets. Um, so it started off with 
pure OTC derivatives and in covering interface swaps, relative false swaps. Uh, and then uh, in the past year or so, we expanded to equity swaps. Uh, then I mean, along the process, uh, uh, we now covers the life cycle of standard digital securities, equities or bonds. And they're still expanding to now include uh, uh, repos and, uh, and security finance. Uh, uh, and then, uh, then a separate group is now being formed to handle collateral. So it's a much more comprehensive standard. Um, uh, uh, it's in progress, as you can point it out. Uh, the, uh, the last year, uh, Barclays being one of the sponsors of the CDM, uh, uh, along with is the kicked off a, an initial derivative hack. Uh, at that time, the focus was more of um, a life cycle event for interest rate swaps. Uh, but this year, uh, with, the, with, the, with the addition of securities processing, uh, they have done actually introduce a life cycle of, uh, you know, equity or bonds, and, and and let you know, players take a standard uh, um, a broker dealer with a client and how they interact on uh, on, on a execution followed by an allocation uh, followed by. Uh, you know, settlement deep uh, life cycle and, and let people work with and come up with their own solutions. It, it's just an interesting event. Uh, um, there were participants from New York and London, and then this year they added Singapore. Um, so, uh, different uh, uh, technology players have taken uh, the model and applied the various life cycles and came up with their own unique way of approaching. Um, I think close to about 30 or 30 or so, uh, different companies or participants uh, in various locations. Um, so looking at why there is such an important interest is that is, this is the, uh, is the uh, look at, we need, essentially needed a digital data scan. Um, the, the existing ones, whether it's a fixed protocol, it's purely a messaging standard, an SPMO, which is more or less a data standard, uh, had their own purposes of communicating between parties. Uh, however, there were no a precise standard uh, that it could uh, codify and also uh, help in uh, parties come to a consensus and record this and have a, a kind of like a digital reference. And none of those kind of features existed in the existing uh, Pixar SPMO standard. Uh, now, so that's our, that's our main focus in CDM. Um, um, I've been involved in this uh, CDM working group from almost now 18 months, uh, going through uh, you know, all the different working groups and contributing. Uh, and I'll come to that, uh, what we are doing with CDM for sure later on. Uh, you look at the benefits of that is, is you can see that uh, most of these, uh, if you look at the fixed protocol earlier on, it was primarily an order and execution. Of course, some allocations were added later on. So, uh, and then uh, additional product and uh, options and features started adding, but however, it stayed more towards security processing. Uh, FTMO covered only all these derivatives, but when, when they started uh, referring to each other, they referred to, uh, like, for example, fix would still uh, cover some of the aspects of options, but in a, in a, in a format that is more uh, uh, you know, suited to fix. And FTMO referred to some of the cash products in their own implementation. But there are no common standards. Uh, CDM covers both and actually uniformly addresses both of these so that you would have uh, the same representation of, let's say, securities, whether you're going to use in pure securities processing or use the securities as underlying in, uh, in derivatives. Uh, so that's a main uh, advantage of uh, one single model. And it captures the life cycle events. Uh, Precisely, we will come to that. What does it mean? Um, it is called built in data rules. And an interesting problem is that is the CDN is represented as a JSON. Uh, while F, you know, in FTML, you have an XML schema, uh, CDM does not being based upon JSON, JSON schema is not very strong. However, to uh, actually uh, make it better, they will produce within the model itself data rules. So it's more of a business data rule. Um, so it's an interesting thing is in contrast, if you had like a schema which is more of a technical verification um, that does uh, look at only from the perspective of 
whether a, whether an implementation needs the schema. However, uh, the more CDM model looks at more from a business perspective. If we are doing it in a life cycle event, does that meet the uh, is this the standards of the life cycle event? Uh, and that could be by product, and hence it's much more uh, elaborate in terms of validation of, of, the, of the underlying data. Uh, the, the, one of the interesting things is that it tracks causes and effects. Uh, the most in, in existing standard, you just simply are, are moving from state to state. Whereas here, it actually looks at the same, what are my inputs and what are my outputs? Somewhat very similar to factoring uh, uh, how DLTs or uh, blockchains uh, work, except that this is completely an underlying DLT or blockchain independent data format so that it could be applied to any of the uh, uh, blockchain uh, or DLT. Uh, it maintains lineages, which is essentially tracking sort of uh, audit trails so that if you go through the life cycle of that event, you would always be able to go back to the previous event that that was in, in, along the life cycle chain. Uh, we, we can consider a bit later on this. Uh, we talked about JSON. Uh, it, there are other advantages being purely a, a JSON format being a textual format has got some advantages on legal dispute. Uh, I, I wouldn't go too far into this. You know, just jump on to uh, you know what is the CDN itself. And you know how that you know a broad sense of a, a you know a, a data structure. Uh, it's interesting. It is you know we started moving calls with smart data for smart contract. Uh, if anything, smart contract is a bit more nebulous definition, particularly in capital markets, as the processing side, the event processing, or the business life cycle processing, are much much more complex. So you really needed a, a very standard way of defining the data, and that's what CDN comes to. So. A typical header looks at that, you know, or, or, you know, or you indicate the participants uh, or what we call as parties. Uh, the event lineage is the one that points to the previous event. So since you're creating a chain of events within the data structure, so this is very unique. Excuse so, me, uh, yeah. Mike, looks like Ron has raised his hand. Maybe he should. Uh, what, what, oh, what I couldn't. Yeah, yeah, I, I couldn't see. Okay, go ahead, Ron. Hey, Manny, I'm sorry. I just I just want a, a couple of quick questions. And just, Vivin, building on your comment previously, just so I'm clear, this is not fully developed and vetted yet, right? Is this, is where are we in that process? Because I would imagine some of the common life cycle aspects would be, would be relatively difficult to flesh out across multiple asset classes. But where does this stand currently? And then I've got one other question on the header that you just mentioned. Uh, yeah, so the, uh, it's a good, good point. From the OTC derivatives point of view, it is fully covered the life cycle from, uh, as essentially we talk about a trade life cycle here, right? So from the, from, it starts from a more or less from a post trade perspective, so you're not talking about trading here. Uh, right. That means if you start from an, from an execution to allocation uh, to the standard life cycle events in, in, in derivatives, uh, rates and resets, and you know, all the stuff that goes on, termination, the, uh, standard novation. Uh, all yep. of those are all documented. Now, when it comes to securities processing, um, which has happened this year, uh, it, it, it fairly attempts to cover everything from, again, execution, uh, that means then move on to allocation. Uh, you would then come up into uh, sort of, you know, getting into the nitty gritty details of net, and this is where it's still uh, it, being further developed. Um, uh, but again, it, it covers it broadly, uh, uh, uniformly across. You know, if you talk about uh, cash products, equities or bonds, it's irrelevant because it's just an underlying security. So, Got yeah. it. <clears throat> yeah, so it, it, so it, it is still a, 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 a model in development. Um, but it, it is it, the one thing I could tell you is that is. Um, if you look back two years from now, if you're not using CDM in your DLT implementation, you are out of luck. Uh, it's probably because the most industries now galvanizing towards this, it comes into one common standard across cash and derivatives, which usually had been a problem because cash markets were, you know, one way and derivative markets were another way. Here, it becomes as a, as a common integrated uh, platform. And added to that, they had ICMA, which just covers the uh, uh, security finance, repo and security finance, and, it be, and now bringing in collateral, you're you bringing in a much more comprehensive scheme, uh, and 
by the fact that these two things are all linked to each other from, uh, from the inception of the trade all the way to settlement of the trade uh, across multiple asset classes. You are really looking at a data standard that's primed for use. Uh, some, you know, you, you, can anyone start developing the product? Yes, yes. We have been building our platform almost now for more than a year using this model. It's painful because the model has been evolving fast. Uh, it, but it's started stabilizing, I would say, the last couple of months uh, because in most of the product categories are, are, are baked in. And uh, now getting into nitty gritty details, details of you know making sure that the standards you know, are, are, are actually practically applicable. That's why this tax are uh, conducted. Got got it. Okay. No, and thank you, Manny. And one last question, just real quickly. I don't need to monopolize the call for on everyone, but when looking at this CDM event specifically, and maybe I'm getting too far ahead in the technicals, but is this a hash within the CDM event? Are they running their own hash functions within this? And do you know what the methodology of the hash is? Or yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to think ahead to on train on chain DLT transactions and that will that data be absorbed into this kind of CDM event and, and it's a new hash and, and I'm probably mangling some of the, the computer science around it that my colleagues on the call know much better. But I'm just trying to figure out do they mean hash the way we mean hash in the DLT space? Uh, yes, except that this hash is a model hash. Um, that means uh, by using this a uh, hash as a key level uh, of on the CDM objects, you are actually um, the underlying DLT independent. So like, for example, uh, when we implemented this thing, uh, 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 we'll be implementing this thing on Corda, uh, what we do is there is a, uh, like any other DLT, they provide you, if you give a transaction, they give a hash. Uh, but this uh, hash is more of a DLT specific hash. So the CDM itself, when you when we construct the CDM object, it constructs the CDM hash for the entire object, and hence later on you could act, since it becomes a key part of the data being stored, you could actually retrieve it by a domain hash, or you could use the underlying DLT hash. So if it, it's up to it's up to you, uh, it's up to the implementer of uh, of uh, whoever uses the CDM uh, to use whatever they choose. Um, but you know, it's the, the advantages there's now. You can uniformly write code across multiple DLT. Uh, if you just choose only CDM hash, you don't care about, about the underlying DLT. So you simply have to say, retrieve data, here's my hash, you should be able to retrieve the data no matter the underlying DLT. We are not talking about interoperability between DLTs here, it's purely, let's call it a, a data interoperability between multiple uh, DLTs and blocks. Got it. So, Un understood. That makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, the, you know, carrying on. Uh, it, as I said, the, the, there is a chaining of events and also we capture the event effects. Uh, basically, the, a, a higher level, a, a CDM is an event or, or essentially a transaction that captures a, a bunch of inputs, which could be zero or more inputs, and then a, a, a bunch of outputs, much similar to what we would see on a DLT uh, transaction. Um, except that this has got a more structure. We just got what's called the basic primitive events. The primitive events are the building blocks. Um, uh, what I would say is, how do you create a new trade? How do you terminate a trade? How do you allocate a trade? Uh, and then the actual life cycle events which is built up on top of that, which could be at the at, at individual functional level of a business cycle or at the portfolio level of uh, business cycle. Those are all the life cycle events, which are more of a business class piece. Um, so it's, it's, it's a two tier event. Uh, so you could combine a bunch of primitives to actually you know, uh, create a business event. Uh, the, References to the uh, the contract are essentially the outputs are typically contracts or in a, a, a or let's call it event object. Um, this could be a higher level contract at, at, a, at a trade or an execution, or it could be at as low level as a simple cash flow transaction. So whatever there is the net result of an output. So for example, if you take if you take a new trade, the output would be a, a contract. If you take a, a an allocation. Uh, the input would be, let's say, a, 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 a block trade, and then the output would be a series of allocated trades. Um, if you take a, a, a payment processing life cycle, the input could be one or more contracts, and the output could be one or more uh, payment interest instructions, or what we call as transfer events. Uh, everything is model defined, so it is not mapped to any underlying, uh, let's say, DLT specific. So you could really take that and apply it to the underlying DLT of your choice. 
but by by defining a data model with that, uh, uh, you know, uh, at a much higher level, it's a lot easier to move uh, your data from uh, DLT to DLT. Um, moving on to this is how uh, you know the interesting thing is most messaging systems, if you look at it from the move, uh, if you take from order to execution, uh, I, I'm just doing a very broad level to allocation and you know, going into the uh, clearing and settlement process. It, it, these things are just unidirectional. Essentially, you move from one stage to another stage, you, you move on to another stage, uh, then you take the next of data, data standards or data processing messaging standards, you go to the, uh, the subsequent stage. So that, I, I represent that the, the, those things as, as green, uh, like, like it's green arrow. Uh, CDM in, in return also does a backward looking, essentially chaining the event. That means a built in audit trail saying that if I had an execution as, as an event, how did this execution come about? It has a link as a, or an event reference, which is a hash, into the original order or, or, or a set of uh, other events or inputs uh, built into this execution. So you really can go backwards to say, if I had a transfer and then in, uh, let's say in simplest case, it was an internal compliance requirement or, or a regular task request in show me the entire life cycle of how did you arrive at a transfer. So from the transfer event, I think we can go back into a settlement event or a, a netted, netted event. From there, you can go into how this event, the settlement is still created because this is netting a bunch of individual transactions. How did they come about? It could be a bunch of trades coming from either from allocation or directly a series of execution. I should actually add one more arrow here. Uh, but the net result is that it's the CDM itself gives you kind of a built-in audit trail, which is very, very important. Uh, and by this, uh, parties signing on to have their entire history on record on the on the on the ledgers. Um, so you don't have to go around looking for uh, audit trail history. And also, this information being, let's assume that uh, propagated to regulators, they're not going to come back and ask you ever questions like, you know, how did you come up with this result? Right now, every time there is a request, they, they will throw a request at you, and you have to go out and collect this data from potentially multiple dozens of internal systems to piece them all together and submit it to uh, to, the, uh, to an audit uh, to uh, to a regulator. And if, it, if the regulator requires the same data from your counterparty, you may you will definitely end up with you know uh, data that's missing or inconsistent, and not so with the um, CDM. That's the biggest advantage of you know, having a, a well-linked data structure. Any questions at this point? That, that's what its main purpose is to say, how do we apply a digital standard that parties, when they, you know, use the standard, you, you have a complete self-referential uh, data model. It, it's okay. JSON text across the entirety of the, of the chain here or the process here, Manny? Uh, JSON is the data represented as output. Uh, you know, but CDM is a data standard. It does yeah. not, it, uh, uh, the different languages, what are the different operating languages can be any number of reasons. They are to start out with Java, then uh, digital assets came in, and then, you know, they come up with their own DAML uh, architecture on top. Now there are efforts from uh, anything from JavaScript to anything, whatever, a lot of, it they open source the entire CDM data model. So it's no longer uh, before uh, until about a few months ago it was under the ESPM. You had to have you know, city membership. Now you no longer have to. You can go in, register, uh, simply online register, get access to the entire uh, open source, uh, and they are now also into the uh, open source the tools that are necessary to uh, create the model. So you could go ahead and if you felt that there is a certain asset class that you wanted to add on to, you could go ahead and model it. That's it, and you can submit it back to CDN for approval. Or uh, you could just continue using your own product as uh, an extension to CDN. So okay. that's what we are. Thank you. And another comment um, on the hash. Uh, as you know, in the uh, cryptographic community, hash is known as a commitment, right? Basically, uh, that commitment is what you're signing. So I guess since the hash uh, standard stand, stands separately 
from the hashing standard of the underlying DLT, uh, it is in effect something that, uh, you know, that can stand uh, separately in, in, in the sense that it, uh, uh, it, no matter which DLT it's implemented in, that hash will always uh, be similar. The second point is that since it's a commitment, basically it's a legal commitment uh, arises out of it. Yeah, yeah. And, right. and that's, that's the key part because it's a bilateral uh, so, uh, uh, agreement. Most of these, this is the, uh, the product that they are supporting now, which are the swaps and the derivatives, are bilateral agreements. Uh, yeah, so, but, but it's also applicable to, to, to you know post trade processing of a, any any between securities between a broker dealer and a customer or an exchange and a broker dealer. You can own it any, anywhere. It's just, uh, and also, if, if you bring in a, in a custodian, it's a multilateral as well. And broker dealer, customer, and the and the and the corresponding custodian. So all of them see the same data structure through the life cycle. Um, so that there is no ambiguity in, in, in the reference, and there are essentially completely eliminates reconciliation at any stage of that time independent of the underlying DLT. The CDM by itself, you know, provides you that, that whole linkages. So uh, in simple form, if, if, if we agree to, you know, if we, if we take out the complexity of the underlying DLT architecture, if simply we all agree to the CDM and then, you know, and we put it in an immutable database, then we are all still golden. Of course, you know, what the DLT provide you is, is, is the whole security aspect of it and, you know, communication between parties and, and the consensus mechanism. But as a CDM, it, it can also independently be used intern internally. So some of the banks already started exploring this uh, for the, because they're having this huge data replication of, uh, of trade data across multiple systems. And they don't have a ref single reference and they're looking and saying, why don't I use CDM? And then I can, any, any trading platform, it's impossible to rewrite all of them, but at least if they have a common CDM data, anyone can go on and pull the data from that one common source. This is within the bank, they are looking at how you know, CDM is used. We, we are more interested in, in an actual DLT implementation. It was uh, strange to see, <clears throat> not to see IBM in there uh, with, uh, with the Hyperledger Fabric, because last year they were there. Uh, and uh, I, I'm sorry that Tom Lee has disappeared. Otherwise, I would have asked him that question. Why, why didn't you guys show up? Yeah, I mean, it, it, I guess, you know, they already participated. But, it, but it, you know, the participants were free to choose any, any underlying DLT, not necessarily the only ones that showed, was there on the, on the hackathon. We could have come up with a hack fabric, which is what last year they did. So some of them, some of them used fabric as their uh, um, blockchain. So uh, you know, it's up to individual participants, whatever they want. Uh, I'm just going to go show this thing how we actually implemented in a CDM and a test environment. Um, this is the life cycle. I'm not going to go too, too too much into it, except that we set up nodes for our banks to come in, and we provided a whole infrastructure for the for the ISTA working group members. So they could actually use it to, uh, and verify. We did a full test of this, uh, at least a partial test of this whole lifecycle uh, early in May uh, with uh, all the participants of the banks and CCPs um, and, uh, and us all working together to verify that this is really doable. And we used Corda and we used CDM, everything's documented in CDM and the messaging protocol was being stored in, in database in, in this vault or whatever the underlying DLT all our CDM messages, not the underlying, you know, real specific. So we just store only JSON messages. So that gives a big advantage of not having to be tied up to one particular DLT. Uh, and and we, we did this whole um, uh, orchestration of how two parties putting in their own K data, how would you actually, you know, create a shared service infrastructure so that these trades can be actually matched uh, and then create a golden record. Uh, I'm just going to go too fast. It's, a lot of stuff into it. But ultimately what you see is that is once it's matched, you create a golden record and that they're also being actually being you know, uh, sent over to regulators. This is what we, 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 we did a full test uh, using CDM uh, and Corda. Instead of Corda, I could have been using any other DLT, but we just chose one uh, for that uh, for testing purposes. Um, so that's an actual use. 
uh, use case. Now we are expanding to add more, you know, the CCTVs are interested for clearing. So that our next thing that we are working on. So uh, this is just some summary of what we have worked on purely on CDM, uh, providing the test group, which is went through the thing, and now we are building this full life cycle product, uh, essentially bringing, uh, you know, uh, broker dealer customers are essentially, you know, D2C networks. You know, most of them, are the current implementations are all purely look at consortiums. Uh, we know that it's very difficult to see, but the, 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 the sweet spot is is the bringing vice and software together. That's what our focus is. And in mostly, the you know, interesting thing is I, I went and talked to SEC and CFTC staff for the past month or so, uh, and we, we discussed about CDM, DLT, and then a more new exciting topic about multi-party computation for our custody. Maybe that's probably another topic, another another you know, that's somewhere down the road. Uh, but that's you know it's all related to how CDM can be applied, and the regulators are very keen on seeing data standards being applied to DLT. Not everyone comes up with their own proprietary implementation. Uh, I, I I'm going to skip this thing just to show that how CDM is powerful enough uh, to show that we are actually implementing these. Uh, using Florida Network, we're implementing the life cycle of these processes and linking and, and bringing them all together uh, so that uh, a, a digital assets, no matter where and what part of the uh, underlying assets are being formed, uh, we can actually process and provide them a fully uh, peer to peer uh, shared services, uh, uh, you know, um, make it available for them to. Uh, banks can use whether it's crypto tokens or their own issue tokens or the new utility tokens, you name it. Uh, it's all uh, at a higher level for us, just, just you know, securities and security stuff. Yeah, that's what well, that's actual practical implementation of CDM we are working on. Thanks for your time. Uh, I, I hope I hope that things will take too much of the time. Any questions? Manny, I know you and I have spoken at many gatherings as well. well how, how, what's the easiest way to kind of collaborate and work on some of this, or at least see the updates that are going forward on CDM? Um, in what sense? Um, and, and how's, it, how's, it, how's, it, uh, how's it developing? Who's using it? What are the models you're looking at? What use cases have been fully developed beyond post-trade? Yeah, so CDM is the... Uh, you know, we, as I said, we are applying to two different areas. One is the wood derivatives, and, and, and uh, it's much more initially more of a test scenario. Now, CCTs are getting into more serious. Uh, CNE, LCX uh, are, are getting into the game slowly. So that means they are saying, okay, you know, how do you apply to theory? And, and how do you apply to, you know, uh, then uh, there is a separate initiative on collateral, but collateral is still in the very early stages of the CDM model definition. Uh, but there are uh, interests within the community of applying CDM for collateral. Um, asset side, we are, you know, as I said, we are, we are implementing CDM assets. There are other uh, interesting new areas uh, um, uh, around the utility tokens. People are talking about interbank uh, cash transfers or intraday cash transfers. Uh, there is, there are some interesting uh, applications being developed uh, using. CCM as well. I mean, still they're all early stages. Uh, we, we, we can say that having worked on CDM almost 18 months, and I'm almost clear on our work, we're actually implementing our digital assets. Uh, we have come quite a long way, and, and you know, probably in the next few months, we would be able to you know, showcase the actual implementation. Okay, thank you. So, uh, is, are these slides going to be available for others who did not see? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I would curate with you, uh, Vipin, and this is just what I have hacked and put together, which is essentially what I used for the, some of the data hack participants. Um, so, I, you know, we can work out and see what's, what's relevant, and I, I don't want to bring in any of the commercial things into the picture, so let's, as long as we stick to CDM, we can clean up the presentation and put it out, and we can uh, add it to the uh, 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 content uh, within the working group. Let's work yeah. on it uh, offline. It's uh, it's very interesting because a lot of the big big banks are in really involved in this in this, including the bank that I used to work for, BNP Paribas, is a big uh, proponent of CDM. I don't know how much they will use uh, in the coming years, but definitely JPM, 
Barclays, people like that are also um, involved. Uh, so we have about 15 minutes. Um, I was hoping to go into some of the uh, projects that we're working on. One of them is, of course, the CDM uh, project, um, meaning the, uh, the standards definition project with money is uh, leading. So we'll put the information about that in the in that in that particular project, and then we will take up um, the other projects. Unfortunately, most of the people who are here, uh, I mean, I think Kirti is uh, interested in the, the tokenization project, um, and so money went into details of how he's uh, extending the CDM into the digitalization aspect of things. But uh, independently of that, uh, Ron Resnick had talked to me about collaborating on the token uh, uh, initiative, the TTI, TTI he called it. Um, so Kirti, you, you have something to say about the tokenization Initiative, or should we um, should we go into the other uh, other aspects of the uh, other the projects that we're working on? Kirti, oh, you disappeared. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, the other projects that we're working on include uh, a taxonomy. Gary, will you say, want to say something, Gary? I guess not. Hey, Vipin, it's Ron. Could you bring up the list of, I, I, and again, my apologies, I've been out of it for the past few weeks with some work and travel and, and, and I'm kind of diving back in. I know that we talked about allocating some work streams. Do you have that list that you can display or show share post this this call that way with the folks who missed some stuff can kind of get back on the horse yes let me let me get to that uh give me a second here uh, i'm going to share my uh, screen with the uh, with uh, you know the meeting minutes meeting notes <clears throat> which actually has the um projects okay so I'm going to share the screen. You can see this, right? Yes. So it's it's the link is from the meeting notes, which we saw before the CMC projects. And in that, we have a taxonomy uh, work. And we also have the data standards work, which money is uh, kindly uh, leading. But, you know, there is a mix of uh, standards there. There may be other standards that we have to look at, but primarily it's the ISTA CDM. Then we have the use case stream, which uh, Stan is supposed to be leading, but he hasn't shown up in the last few meetings. Hopefully he'll come back. Then we have the obstacles, uh, which are the obstacles to adoption. Right. So they, I should mention something here because which money probably did not mention, but it is very, very important. That is part of the CDM. So, so the, there are two things. One is that non-specific hash, which we talked about. Second is there is uh, something called synonyms, which is basically a way to transform from other standards, FPML, uh, ISO 2022, uh, 
various other standards into CDM. And that's very important because obstacles to adoption are interoperability uh, between the different standards is missing. So unless you have a way to transform from one to another, you cannot uh, go forward. And also to legacy systems. Uh, one of the things that was mentioned uh, in the, during the Deriv hack was a lack of um, access to identity standards or identity infrastructure uh, through the reference data portion of CDM. So uh, that will definitely cause a problem in adoption. I know that Rosetta, for example, Rosetta is the library that is attached to CDM that should be used to transform data from outside into the CDM specific data. Has uh, access to GLIFE, which is a global legal entity identity foundation, a mouthful there, but this is a very important uh, organization that gathers uh, data from multiple enterprises all over the world so that you can look at the data and say, are you, where are you domiciled? What regulations or what documents have you provided based on where you are? Uh, the other thing is it allows for a hierarchical drill down. That means if one organization owns another one, then you're able to say, what is the parent organization? What are the children organizations? The third thing is that it will allow you to go deeper and deeper into the, into the uh, actual beneficial owners. So the beneficial owners are very important for uh, KYC AML because the actual natural persons who are at the base of these organizations could be on an OFAC list uh, or a, some kind of a OFAC list. That means you should not be doing business with them if they have a certain percentage of ownership in the enterprise you're dealing with. So all of these are important um, for adoption because now this is knitting together not only the, the security infrastructure, I mean, the infrastructure for handling securities and the various events, but also other things like the KYC AML. Ron, uh, what, you have a question? I, yeah, I just I, I just want to be cognizant of time, and I, I appreciate you, appreciate you going through the, the particular work streams. A couple of logistical things, Bipin, and, and I suspect uh, some others might be having this problem. But I, as I recall, I had kind of raised my hand around being part of or an interested party for uh, five and six. I think it was regulation and tokenization. I've been unable to log in, so I'll take that up separately. But um, if you have access to this, if, please feel free to add me because I'd like to help move forward. Uh, those two topics, if there's, if if it's useful to do that. So you have to get a Linux Foundation ID. Do you have one? I do. I do have a Linux Foundation ID, and then the last couple of times, it it might be me fat figuring access or something. But okay, uh, so I try to you know, access, you I, know I, what uh, the thing to do is um, when you log into the wiki, yep. right, which is where you have to go, wiki.hypologen.org. Yep. So if you go to the wiki dot, you don't have to do that here. I, I want to be kind. No, no. I, I, it's important because people have been telling me this. So what happens is that, you know, it will bring up usually a chat, a, a, a login window, and if you do not get that login window, then you should just clear your cache or do something that causes that login window to appear. 
And once you log in, you should have full access to the CM state front. Okay. That's what I'm trying to tell you. If you, yeah. if you cannot get to call me up, because this is important. If people cannot contribute, it is a problem, right? Yeah. I, I, to be fair, I, it was a, I had tried a couple of times. I couldn't get in, and it was on my, I'll get back to this, and three weeks went by, and I never did. So I'll, I'll work on that again today. Okay. Uh, so there are several other, uh, you know, working groups here, the regulation, tokenization, and digital currency, and oracles. Uh, which is another part of the CDM, the reference data part, uh, which uh, I think, I, I mean, I'm not really sure exactly how that works. I'll look into it a little more, but oracles are a very important part of the functioning of any system because basically you have the blockchain system, and then you have the outside world. How do you interface with the outside world? Either to get prices, to get security data, to get identity data, whatever it is. So all of that has to happen through the intermediation of Oracle. Anyway, we have come to 1057. Anybody else um, has anything to say? Now is the time. Nothing from me. All right, so I'll make the uh, I'll make the recording available. I will also work with Money to get uh, something he deems presentable on the slides, and I'll put in the minute uh, meeting minutes as far as I can, um, you know, get out of the uh, recording. Thank you, and hopefully this has been a, a worthwhile session. Thank you, Vipin, much appreciated. Thank you, thanks, thanks all. Thank you. Thanks, sir.